want to look into the camera. That's the oh, direction the camera is actually pointing at you. So that, so that I'll end up looking this way. It is yeah. kind of fucked up. I don't have one behind me. Yeah. But that we're using that camera right there. You're using that camera right here. This one isn't really on, even though the green light is on. All right. I use that one for zoom. I still think the best angle is like behind us, so you get like the top there. down. Yeah. <laughs> we need to get. Um, oh, you know what's funny? Uh huh. I already hit the button. You already hit the button. I did. Oh snap! I, about it. I hit the button. You hit the button. I hit the button. Hit the button. I hit the button. Uh, can you? I was gonna say. Can oh, you throw that up we're so live at Studio Five Eighty Six B, talking to Greg Hanna on Ten Questions. Oh my God! I can't even express how glad I am to see a friend from middle school going way back, way, way, way back. He remembers me much chubbier than I am now. <laughs> but Greg Hanna. Dun, dun, dun. That's right. That's me. Hi. Hi, everybody out there. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Well, that we thought we'd take a moment, being that you're in town. Audio thing back up. Sorry. Can you put the audio thing back up real quick? <laughs> sorry. Oh, did it switch on? Yeah, so it's okay. Sorry. I'm not happy with the way that's doing that. Dun, da, 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 da. Dun, da, 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 da. Now it's because it started popping over top of it instead of... Okay, cool. There you go. Are you happy now? Yes, I am happy. Can you see your little audio green? Yes, red, I can see the little thing, thing, the little thing going going past. So glad to have you today, Greg. Well, oh, glad to hear. You gotta hold me to say, Hey, I'm gonna be in Columbus and first off, you the first question is an easy one. Then where are you from? <clears throat> well, just over the creek. Just really. over that's true, it's a valid it's, point. It's, just over the creek. <laughs> I dry so once a week, I go up, um, oh, through the middle of Gehanna, up Old Johnstown. There we yeah. go. Mm -hmm. So right. I drive past Heil, and every time I drive past it, I go, Greg. Yeah. And, and it's just because it will, the rest of my life, be when I see the, yeah, yeah. Hannah. Heil Drive. Heil, Hannah, Heil. <laughs> right. Well, we moved, uh, I was just talking with a coworker about this, because uh, I, I worked this morning for a little bit remotely, and so he said, oh, you're in a different room. And like, mm. yeah, I'm in my room in my parents' house. He said, like, oh, that's one of your, that's one, you're one of those people. It's like, yeah, well, everybody's doing it, so I figured I'd do it. So I'm just working from there. But uh, we were at 359 Heil yeah. for a long time until 87. And then we okay. moved to Cherry Bottom, off of Cherry Bottom Road. Ah, uh -huh. see, I never saw that house. Oddly enough, it's Backwitz's house. Another classmate <laughs> from uh, St. Matthew and St. Charles. <laughs> So that Matt, that's Matt Backowitz's family's house. So we bought from him. That so his family owned that from like seventy or seventy one when it was built, right? Until eighty seven, and then my parents have had that house from eighty seven to now. Oh wow! How did I not end up in that house? Well, we moved there in, like I said, November of eighty seven. Oh okay. So it, I, I'm sure you might have been there. I think I, by that because point I'm running Twilight around with Bart Bart like code, that. causing trouble. Oh, that, that could be too. I could the, be too. But we did have games there. So So I probably did so that's odd. That my memory is always the trains. And another thing, too, another uh twist. So my older brother Lee Yeah uh lived off of Tamarack Circle for a while. Uh and then he moved to the other side of Tamarack Circle. Okay. Um in a house that is the exact floor plan replica of the house on Heil Drive. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so when he refers to something he does in his house, he's like, oh, that's in our room. We turned our room into this thing. Yeah. They know, he know, so he room, knows how to, room. yeah, he transfers it. He so, could, he transfers, right. so I know yeah. exactly what he's you talking about. You know exactly about. where everything is. <laughs> oh, my God, that's so funny. It's, it's that's literally amazing. the same floor plan. So it, it brings us to an obvious next question. I mean, it's the question that I, it's one of my favorites, that when I think of, you know, what are my first memories? I have very graphic, like I can turn, I can close my eyes and see moments when I was three or four. Yeah. But I'll tell you, in high school, some of my happiest memories are your basement. That it was Friday nights, we would, you know, it was not uncommon for us to pick some Monty Python thing mm -hmm. to watch. Oh, sure. um, an important part of my education growing up was decidedly Monty Python. That, you know, to this day I love role playing games and so I got away from it and one of the coolest things is it was a year ago my granddaughter came to me um, she's 13 now and said hey will you teach me how to play D&D &D? I was right. blown away yeah. 
So what are, you know what, big family, but your earliest memories, there may not be as many people. What are your no. earliest <clears throat> memories? Well, I was just thinking about that. And uh, so on Heil Drive, if uh, we walked to kindergarten. Okay. At Jefferson Elementary, so that's on Carpenter, I think. Yeah, no, that's a... So we'd walk there, and actually I would walk with Sheila Murphy, and she... I know went, Sheila. She uh, was a long time in the Gahanna Police Department. Yeah, had the hots for my wife, got us off many a ticket. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, like, and I think one of her brothers was um, uh, the chief of police. I think, uh, he was, the whole family, yeah. actually. Yeah. The Murphys were... It's funny, Sheila was best known for um, jumping in front of cars she was mad at on her bike. Yeah, <laughs> she was. Anyway, so you walked to school. So with we Sheila walked to Murphy. school with Sheila Murphy, uh, and I remember, you know, we're walking down the path or whatever, and then we'd walk home, you know, just because she lived, her family lived, uh, I think, on Warman or something like that. Okay, very right close, there. Very right close there, to. Yeah. So I would split off. This is kindergarten. We're walking together. Right. And uh, this guy Ed Shull, I think, tees into. Yeah, Shull tees in. Tees into Heil. Shull runs right. In, yeah. Yeah. So okay. this is before the creek, the bridge of the creek, and. Show and then take the back entrance into Jefferson. So uh, this car comes up as we're walking home, and this guy just rolls into like a Trans Am or something. And says, "You want a ride? <laughs> Do you want a ride?" And we're like six, walking home. <laughs> and, right. You know, looking back at it is like, dude, he was he was going to totally. He was totally going to yeah. take you guys. And we both said no, and evidently he drove away. Wow. And nothing bad happened whatsoever. Right, nothing. I had the same exact experience. I had I was I was walking down the street from from summer camp and like I had just gotten off the bus and everything and this person pulled up and they were like, Do you want to ride? I'm like I'm like nine or ten. And I'm like, No. I'm my, my my house is up the street. I'm okay. I'm I'm good. I'm 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 not getting in the <laughs> so car. This, this kind of stuff happens. <laughs> it's like, wow, it really does happen. Right. It's amazing. So I think that was I mean, I mean, one of my first memories, but that's it, definitely it's kind of striking. You, it, it sticks there. It, yeah, like you're like, you know, Ransom or Red Chief, though, you and Sheila would have been given back. I just feel confident that in the yeah. end, I, you know, I don't know. She hey, Sheila taken might have kicked their ass that's based right. on her later, you that's know, right, her later career. That's right. Well, <laughs> so, so yeah, so that was, a, I think that's a, a, a good candidate for <laughs> uh, a, a first memory. I'm sure there's some other. Abs- no, absolutely. That, you know what? And then, and we spent a bunch of time talking about this stuff because I think it's meaningful that, you know, everybody takes these questions a little bit differently. That that's one of, it's almost a Rorschach set of questions yeah. that kind of take them apart. So that when I say, how do you work? A lot of it depends on how you take that. What does that mean to you? Well, I mean, I guess in a very literal sense, right? I'm working from home wherever home is. And right now that's Chicago. I mean, I could be working anywhere. Like I just said, I was working at my parents' house. Mm, absolutely. Uh, this morning, and I will, you know, later on after I get off this call, speed back and go on another meeting. So it's uh, it's kind of a weird juxtaposition to do, like, real grown-up work in, like, a kid's room. So, or what was a kid's room? <laughs> what was a Could kid's room? Right. That's where I but then, right, then it affects you that way. No, I get it. That in your head, yeah, it's a kid's it's room. It's kind of weird. <laughs> so, or, or something that's completely disconnected from my work, because... We all had to make the transition. There were people who, you know, worked in an office. You go there, you do grown-up things, and you come back home. Mm, right. Yeah, home, true. And then you have work. Well, now that's that divide me, is a lot gone. Of people, that it's divide gone. is gone. Yeah. It's completely obliterated. I'd worked from home before, but not constantly. So I haven't been into the office, the office, since March of 2020. Oh wow. So uh, and there's a lot of different reasons for that, but I, I just haven't been in an office. So that separation is gone. So uh, right now I'm in my summer quarters in the basement. Kind of like this kind of a setup, where okay. it's cooler, right? Oh, absolutely. And, but previously, I was in my attic, and that was a, somewhere I could close the door and do that work. Kind of a separation mm. and do work. But that was kind of eroded too, because then when my kids were home from school during COVID, they would come up and ask me questions, right? Like at all different times. Like, well, sorry, wait, I oh, got I got to answer this question. And so I did. No, you carry the five, and then, <laughs> then I did regular work. But the nature of my work is not physical with my hands. So my brother Roy's uh, a union foreman, union electrician. Oh, okay. Foreman. So he works with his hands. Had to be on. It's got to be on site. Yeah, hands on. You guy. can't work from right. home. Absolutely. It's just impossible. Truck driver. I did it. You know what? It ends yeah. up. You got to do it. You got to go deliver. It, there's. You can't do it without people yet. Yeah. So it's it's a different kind of it's a different kind of work, I mm-hmm. guess, than what work may actually think. But you know, I use my brain and my fingers 
to come up with all the stuff we were talking about with, the, with these uh, reports. So basically, also, I write term papers for a living. St. I, Charles, well, at, well, oh, yeah. well <laughs> manifested, and, yes. And every, uh, I don't know, nine months to a year, I come, I have to, I have a new assignment. Right. And See, I think, I, I think that's enjoyable. I, that so sounds you enjoyable. Find that, meaningful that sounds like that it's, like it's not, but cool. Because yeah. I have other friends. For example, he's a budget analyst for Department of Justice. So he works to every year prepare the budgets. Uh, he, you know, make sure the spending is in line with everything else. But it's the same thing. It's a, it's a predictable rhythm. At the end of the fiscal year, he can't take any time off because he's got to count all the money, make sure the books are correct for the, his office. Right. right. It's the same stuff all right. the time. I, I don't have that. I have the kind of right. Same you stuff, have different, but it, it but switches it, it up. Very, very different. Th I different people I talk to. I go in the back door to a lot of places. We were just talking about how you can tell the how a place works by going in the back door. Well, that's yeah. what we get to do. That's half the fun. So I've been to like lots of postal facilities. I've been to nuclear plants. I've been to I've been inside the Pentagon. I've been inside uh, Alcatraz. Oh, nice. That's uh, pretty all cool. The way, no, all the way around. I'm going. Yeah, right. no, that that's the point. That seeing and it's I'm obsessed with perspectives. And beating on the mic. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, and so I find it so much more interesting to look at things from a different angle than expected. Yeah. That's, yeah, no. So I, 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 when you first told me about the things you were doing, the part that I really resonated with was the idea, but it doesn't end up being the same problem over and over. It ends up, no. okay, identify this and figure this piece out. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, which kind of the way I work too, oddly, that were consistently for us sometimes it'll be identifying how a new platform changes what we can do or what we would do like we're involved with a lot of discord stuff on the music side now yeah. because we're looking for a more open forum as opposed to our youtube and spotify presence which is yeah. which is more tailored you post it and then yeah. people watch it yeah right. um this you can interact with people and you can talk to people and have I mean, conversations we have some of the same issues too with our reports right so the report's a static thing oh, yeah. i put it out there and it sits there people look at it or they don't look at it they look right. at some of the things they're interested in or not right? right but it's a static product done a static way right but then we have podcasts mm. which are just two people interacting you know it's usually subject matter expert than like our professional interviewer type person oh wow and okay we have uh you know twitter presence so i'm also involved with uh the one director grown up who you know tweets about our work and so we're like trying to find different ways to put stuff out there so people will go to our reports it's a different platform oh, it's a, you, you are looking it's this yes no exactly yeah and the, then instagram we have an instagram account we have Flickr accounts i mean all these different things because we take a lot of pictures for these places oh, absolutely too, and that adds to the flavor of the report but then that's also a hook to get people again interested in the report to get right interested because in you order. actually want people to read because you want people right. to read them yeah right exactly and i we want that to make an impact both with the Congress people, the people who work for the Congress people, as well right. as the but American for the public. Citizenry. That's yeah, right. Yeah, for exactly. the public. Yeah. That the whole point is that operationally, what you're doing is trying to figure out the FAQs. Right. Oh yeah. Now, how do we answer these questions? You know what? Everybody's asking us, "What the hell's wrong with this piece?" That's right. Oh, exactly. Right. And oh, okay, I love it because it, it. I get my biggest issue with traditional office work was the the day after day of not anything different so especially in sales it was how many people can you call in a day and talk to say the same exact thing right <laughs> yeah. yeah that sounds boring yeah i can say <laughs> it's funny i have a beautiful I, i'm great at selling things and so i have avoided selling things my whole life because i decided i wasn't allowed to use my powers for evil that's right <laughs> if you're really good at manipulating people at some point you got to go I'm a grown man and that's not how you handle it and that you shouldn't do that to people. And so there was a moment I was going to sell cars and I was like, no, I can't. Yeah. I can't do well, it. Well, that's, that's what broke me from where I was in the private sector when we talked about mm, this. Yeah. The market, the, uh, the market research the General study. marketing of, of right. nicotine. Of nicotine. So the one year I worked for tobacco companies, you know, through this, through this company, it was the client. Uh, it was part of, we got access to the database that they had to provide the federal government to, after the state's AD sued them and actually won uh, the big landmark case. I think it was 1998. So they had to provide all this data of where they shipped all these cigarettes right. to mm. the state AGs. And so we used that as a sort of warehouse and shipping data to tell them. Okay, where they, so you can see where the... So I'm going, I had access to this database. I'm looking through the database and 
there's like you know the usual kind of thing you know crazy quilt or crazy corner store you right know, so high oh 95 whatever then there were like vending machine school for girls <laughs> what, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a vending machine, like you know, they were shipping in prisons, and vending machines, like all these places. Like ah, CSG I, girls I knew smoked. Um, <laughs> that was that was enough for me. It's like that's yet another straw yeah. on the camel's back. So anyway, so now uh, you know I work for this uh, agency. And it's just, I mean, it's it's a great career. It's a great calling. Really, it's it sounds amazingly stuff. meaningful. It really does. That I'm. Yeah. I'm glad to know you're out there, Greg. That makes me feel a little better. I'm not overly trusting of that system, and to have. Yeah. One of our St. Chuck's alums, at least, asking the right questions and doing the uh, well, we're trying to well, term we're, papers. we're asking the question, but then also trying to answer it. Right, too. that's what right. I'm saying. Like, this is what we found. You know, we're not perfect, but you no, know, well, this is no, the kind of is. stuff we found. And and as one of my coworkers, again, I was just talking to him this morning, said, you know what, we could say this and that because we have no skin in the game. Everybody we talk to, absolutely, you know, has this perspective. I want to maintain this, or yeah. I want to change this. We're agnostic as far as that's concerned. Because you're not to trying to change against. anything or do anything. You're just meaningful. trying to you're just trying to get to the That's root right. of the the That's problem. Right. And we also say, well, these, this is the criteria we're using to judge this, that, or the other right. thing. And here's all of our evidence. Here's the criteria. Right. Here's where we see it's fallen short. And here's our recommendation. So we don't have the force of law. We're, right. We're telling Congress or the agency, according to these things that we just use as criteria, they're the federal law that we see or their own policies or right. uh, we have you know a whole bunch of other kinds of criteria we can use on good governance or good way to run an organization right right this is what we see and this is what we recommend it's so interesting so like I in my head that's what I'm doing in my head what I'm doing is approaching the globe agnostically with the hypothesis that really all of it is symptomatic of people feeling like they don't have a space they can exist as who they are so they feel unseen yeah at the point you are holding back who you are, that means you're devaluing yourself. Yeah. That as opposed to consistently being in an argument over why do people hate each other, you're actually trying to treat a symptom when the reality is why do people hate themselves so much that they feel unseen and they're holding things back. So that as opposed to approaching each interview with a direction I'm hoping it goes, I'm totally yeah, no, I, I don't have skin in the game. I'm interested in who yeah. they are. That, For instance, the questions very specifically are designed to not focus on what what accomplishments or what it's what's what have you found meaning in. Yeah. So that, I mean, we look at what do you work, and it's hard to not go, what do you work? How do you work? We look mm -hmm. at how do you play? Yeah. The playing's important. What do you do with that? Uh... Well, <clears throat> uh, I was thinking about this, too, because I had a long drive here. Uh, <laughs> right. And my, ki my kids were invested in their iPads and iPods, <laughs> so I had a lot of time to myself. So uh, part of the uh, how do you play, too, because this is growing out of what you just mentioned about memories of, the, of our mm. basement, right, is those role-playing games, the, the uh, board, board games, war games that we had, and we still play those. My brothers and I, we still play those. So, for example, we were on vacation, uh, all of us, uh, with different cabins in this place uh, outside of Erie, Pennsylvania, okay. two weeks ago. So each family had their own cabin. And so, what, it was at that time. So we, we had my father, myself, my older brother, and the youngest brother, and then the nephew. Anyway, so we're all around there playing one of these train games. Oh, actually a train game. So, and we have a running list of like whoever wins gets to pick the next one. Oh, for the gets next, to pick. The, oh, nice for the next uh, family gathering, either Thanksgiving mm. or Christmas or you know whatever. Fill in the blank. Next summer vacation. So, right. And you know the 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 composition of the table changes. Changes. But the same people you know usually come in and play these same kind of games. So, that's just really fun. I could do that all the time. Right. I just well, that's it, just great. I think we have an advantage of. I think those games gave us a greater ability to access our imagination in a meaningful way. Yeah. You know, that in addition to the things we were learning along the way from, you know, St. Charles and everything else, that we were accessing a piece that not everybody was, that in a world of imagining what you might get or what you might have, 
we spent time imagining who we could be. Right. Like, in a meaningful way. Um... Do you guys do Zoom or any of that? Do you guys do any weekly games or monthly games where uh, you get together? Or do you have anybody you play with? Yeah, my brother Lee, we play uh, on Vassal or Steam. Okay. And we'll play uh, some of these war games, you know, depending on the date. So we have uh, a standing Thursday date. We're on Zoom. Well, we're on Discord, actually, between us. Okay. So okay. we talk in headsets, and then we play the game, uh, you oh, know, whatever okay. it is. So right now we're doing... Um, we started with the Spanish Civil War in this one system, and so now we're going to move through, like, essentially World War II. Using, You're going to work up. <laughs> yeah, we're going to work up. So right now we're in the winter war between the Soviet Union and Finland. Ooh, so what that a mess. Game, we just started that one. Uh, Coolest uniforms ever. <laughs> the Finns the Finns in oh, all yeah. white. Yeah, no. <laughs> but, you know, you're just moving these, little, what used to be cardboard, but, you know, now it's on the screen. Right. But, you know, just uh, little pieces of cardboard through hexes. So, uh, but yeah, he still play. Uh, he still plays Starfleet battles. He has a regular D and D group. We're gonna play Traveler. What I mentioned. Oh, We're nice. gonna play Traveler. My son made up a character, which is awesome. Half the fun is making a character. Right? Oh, it is. And, and then you got to make the backstory, and you got to play. The, and then you got to play in a team, which is something that uh, a lot of teenagers don't do if they don't play sports. Because right. I never played a sport. So your Me our our Other sport was swimming at one point. Our I sport was, was trying to get through a dungeon. Have you ever uh, played any of the Hearts of Iron games? No, I've heard of that. Yeah, uh, the Hearts series. They're they're really good. I I used to play Hearts of Iron Four a little bit, and it's like it's my favorite as far as like you can you can download mods and stuff like that, so you can change the the different war like the oh, different yeah. wars and stuff like that. It's pretty it's pretty fun. Are you as blown away by I as blown away as I am? <laughs> by the fact that really RPGs have become a huge part. You look at World of Warcraft, you look at Elden Rings, you look at mm -hmm. that everything we did by hand yeah. is now... A video game. A video game. Yeah. <laughs> it is, but uh, but I've also seen, actually since COVID came back, is that Dungeons & Dragons in person has made oh, a comeback. Oh, it's huge. And really? I think some really, uh, you know, some Hollywood actors, you know, Vin Diesel played it. Uh, oh, absolutely. And he wrote an introduction to a Dungeons & Dragons book, a book about Dungeons & mm -hmm. Dragons. And I'm forgetting there's another, like, comedian who there, plays there's it, a, uh, like, online. You yeah. watch the YouTube channel of them trying to go through dungeons and stuff. Well, if you watch uh, Critical Role, which is Matt time. Mercer yeah. and the guys, they're all voice actors. Yeah. Some of them do, you'll see them occasionally as character actors and stuff. Yeah. But what they do a ton of is voice acting. Yeah. Um, that... So we were trying to identify, right, there was this new wave of people wanting to play D&D. &D. Stranger Things. Yeah. yeah. That our run on it was E.T. Right, yeah. That, that blew it up. And then Stranger Th they're still playing it on that. Are they really? Yeah. Yeah, they still play D&D. &D. And that it's, it's always interesting in my head to see where all of a sudden you'll see that pick up speed. Though I'm told the conventions are... A little heavy on the anime these days. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's what pays the bills. Right, right. <laughs> you know, but, but for a while, it was uh, Magic the Gathering. Oh, absolutely. Which, absolutely. which then bought the D&D &D brand, right? But that was the big, not flash in a pan, but that was the new thing. All right, I'm not going to begrudge you this. I've played some card-playing games, and it's kind of cool. But oh, absolutely. it's not the same thing as this that we're doing, or that I like to do. That well, then it was a different thing. Yeah, right. I agree. Yeah. No, I hit... So I had a moment where uh, Brian, uh, my stepson, who is a more close friend. There's six years yeah. between us. It's more yeah. like a brother thing than a, a kid thing. There yeah. isn't any of that. But it was World of Warcraft was on their first, so it's vanilla, the first one that came out. And he shows it to me. And I remember playing like Ultima on the Atari, yeah. mm -hmm. not Ultima Online, anybody out there watching, no, like, they're pixels, and yeah, and all of those games, and when he showed me graphically, I spent the next year just not really playing the game, just wandering through that world, yeah, <laughs> just going, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then lost another four years after that, and eventually got over yeah. the addiction, but <laughs> it, it has come so far, that, you know, it brings me to my next question, which oddly relates to the play for me, relates to what we're doing here, yeah. relates to how I work. That for me, my prayer for the world has become my work. 
I, I have, it's the Buddhist prayer to end all suffering because I like the words a friend got me, and so I wear the bracelet lately to remember that for me, this is my prayer to end all suffering. This is my, hey, have you met my friends? And my friends are everywhere in the world. I can't picture any kind of conflict that isn't in some way going to affect somebody I care about. How do you pray? That's another good question. Um, well, I'm still practicing Roman Catholic. That's where okay. I met we know my wife. Other. That's right. So how I met my wife uh, and you know raised my children to go mm -hmm. to Catholic schools, and so that tradition is still very important. And, it's a huge uh, tradition. Today. And to my family, most mm -hmm. of my family. Yeah, no, so I'm... what is also interesting, too, is that uh, myself and my brother are both practicing Catholic, but then it sort of reduces in gradation as you get down further <laughs> in my family uh, family tree. But So I still go to church, I still pray, but it's a very individualistic thing. That's how Christianity has sort of morphed. Yeah, okay. uh, it seems like so. It's a very much a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and yeah. that's it. It doesn't go very much farther than that. But that's not what is portrayed in the Bible. That's no, that's much. true, and it's not what's portrayed in oh my god a the, lot of these a lot of these books that we both the, had. The books that, that we just, worked our way through, mm -hmm. right? I, it's not in. I mean, that that stuff is more community based. Yeah, especially the early history of the church, and further, right? It's it's way more community based, way more based on ethics. How you how you as a Christian interact with, with the, the rest of the world. Yeah, no, and very much so. So the conception of prayer is way more of an individualistic thing. Uh, so it's been traditionally a thought understood. Like you yeah. pray for certain things, you, mm. but that's it should be more than that. And I think that's a well, step that's missing in a lot of Christianity. Today. My family is really big on praying for each other and praying for other people and making sure that you keep other others in your mind because when you're when you're praying solely for something that you want or something that you're focused on it it, it seems like everything is self-centered and god right. is kind of like hey what are you doing you need to pray right. for other people and That's include right. other people in this and act on that yeah right. in a and wider world that. yeah it openly meeting the world with compassion and i i for the record i find this one of the most generous gifts anybody can give me is their time. That you showing up and wanting to spend yeah. time with us having these conversations is meaningful. That in the end, I think we're at a moment in history where the sense of community has to grow past any one institution. Right. That if we don't act as a community, we're, we're just consistently, you know, cutting our Achilles heel. It, it's Well, you miss out on that interaction, so I think that builds those relationships, builds those mm -hmm. bonds, and makes you realize these are other human beings too. So right. you'll you look at some of the national discourse, uh, the most recent, uh, you know, some of the most recent statements that are made. It's like, well, you're not seeing these people as human beings, are you? As human beings, mm -hmm. right? You're just completely treating them as other, and that's how you get into some really difficult situations. Yeah, it, dehumanization is the it's easiest huge. path to, uh, you know. Well, really bad things. And yeah. my theory and, you know. is that it really is based on the fact that we all feel dehumanized. Right. And we don't have a lot of sense of community. So if you look right. back in more history, so, you know, colonial history, you had the the bond of the very immediate colonial survival. village, uh, your own survival. You had a lot more kin networks, but they were all, you know, really locally based. Mm -hmm. And we'll advance the narrative a little bit, but in my neighborhood in Chicago, there was, you're, it's based on parishes, on Roman Catholic parishes. And so there's mm. every four four blocks, there's another parish. Right. right. Honestly, there is. And so the parish where we moved into uh, was really big, had a really big community, a big church, had a big school, uh, had men's society, had women's society, had auxiliaries, they had all these things, and that actually went away. A lot of the kids moved away. Uh, fell it, apart with the aging of the community. Right, it did. Oh, and right. the, so now that parish is closed. The school closed. My kids went there a couple of years, and then they closed the school. They actually just decommissioned the church. They went from sacred to profane use, but not sordid use. That was an official wording. Used. I'll have to send you a letter. <laughs> it, it says, we have decommissioned this church from sacred use. We've allowed profane use, but not sordid use. But not sordid. So I don't know exactly what the definition of all those things are, from profane <laughs> and, sa and, sa and sacred. Right? 
I mean, I know what sacred is, but I, don't I know, right. I know what sacred is. I don't know exactly. I don't the, what's the definition in the Archdiocese I, of Chicago's parlance? I know parlance that in their head, <laughs> profane is not sorted, profane. and sorted is not profane. And that's right. No, there's, there's definitely it's, there's, there's, there's a level in the to Venn it. diagram. <laughs> there's no overlap. <laughs> there's, right? no there's, no overlap. <laughs> there's no overlap on those things. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll research that and I'll get back to you on that. So, <laughs> Looking back on history, but hasn't the sacred in the world of Venn diagrams hasn't profane and sordid happened under the heading of sacred from That's time it, to time? It, it could have, it could have done that. There could have been unintentional <laughs> intersections. But with the those profane worlds. and the sordid don't That's touch. Right. So don't then touch. you, but no. but this pillar of the community now is gone. It's gone. Right. It, literally, it's gone. It's the the bricks are still there, but that community, that faith community, is now gone. So it's right. scattered to the four winds. So you know you have less of those uh, well, community yeah. ties, and that. Quitter copy replaced by some other things. So we just had our block party on that, uh, on my on my street, and that was great because you get to meet your neighbors you of community, outside. Yeah, there's an actual. Right. So you start building that community, and some people chose to participate, some people didn't. All right. Down the other end of the street, there was a Mexican band that started up at 9 p.m. All right, fine, great. I, Go with it. That's great. And we listened to the music and let it wash over. Some us. It was awesome. I, yeah. I know how to say beer. That's right. So there you <laughs> go. And, you know, different people had different, like, come on over, friends came over and right. stuff like that. And so you just, and you just walk around and meet and talk with people you haven't seen and met and talked with for a while. Have you met my friends? Right. So, so yes. So that, uh, that community has to be, or that sense of community, I think is valuable. It needs to, needs to be rebuilt. We need to find that kind of sense. Yeah, of no, I agree. And I, I think that's huge. Some of the religious aspects of it have, broken down in the past not just for roman catholics but i think for a lot of different religions well, too as people move away from there's been a weird move from I, formal religion yeah i find lots of very spiritual people i find lots of people who don't want to define specifically yeah. a religion and how do you bring those people together as a really we're sharing my argument is from astrophysics to zoroastrianism just because i'm gonna there stick my a to z forever <laughs> we're all trying to describe the same thing and then fighting over the nomenclature. That it's the words that are the oh, we got to fight over the words. And it's like, but when I water, but like, I put it through the sieve of the universe and I go, wait a minute, we're saying the same damn thing here. From yeah. unified field theory to God is everywhere, everywhere is God. Yeah, so you mentioned this. So in, in well, I went to Capital University, so one of my good friends was in a fraternity, good friends. Uh, a lot of the guys I was in a fraternity with went to this one religion professor took a lot of pro uh, classes from this one religion who was a complete iconoclast mm -hmm. who you know broke down the barriers of in their minds of all kinds of religion and said but this is really what you want to look at this is really what you want to study it was very critical uh, formal religion to the point where he got into some tussles some, some tussles theological at Capitol, yeah. tussles at, at this Lutheran University I can understand that I was thinking that thought as it was going so, that route. <laughs> and, you know, the late night college bowl sessions where you're just thinking and you're talking about your experiences. He said, you know, the, the root of all the religions is basically what Bill and Ted said and Bill and Ted's excellent adventures. Just be excellent to each other. It is. It's hard, <laughs> it's hard not to get away from that one distillate. I quote yeah. it and make people watch Bill and Ted. Right. So <laughs> at the root of every religion is be excellent to each other. It, it could be codified in yeah. different ways. You could say it a different way. But in the end, ways. that's right. The golden rule: Do unto others as you would do on, as you would do unto yourself. No, that's different. I'm not going to do that to that's others. Right. Do unto others as you would have I'd them say, do unto you. <laughs> I'd say the lines really blurred for me when, like, so my mom introduced me to this person called Louis Giglio, and what he what he was always talking about was how the the Christian like theory of how the world works and the uh, evolution theory, and he was always talking about how. It could be the same thing if you really think about it, because the time, the timing of things is never specified. Well, if you really think about it, the timing in the Bible is never really specified well, and the to the point you that get, you can. Yeah. As, as we've noticed over time, mm -hmm. the amount of time that you think of as a long time changes. Yes. So let's say all knowing, all existing for all time. Right. Define day. <laughs> who says who says God's seven days wasn't seven days? gajillion years I already, you know here's here's the issue i brought up more than once god decidedly overworked he's working <laughs> a six day week on a seven day schedule only right. taking one day off there's obviously reasons for fire and brimstone you're going to have an attitude working that much that's right yeah maybe, yeah. maybe he broke his back maybe he maybe broke his back now, now he can't work <laughs> we need to take some time off and heal yeah what do you love well i love my family i just spouted off a lot about that uh, and I found that's unusual and it's really made me kind of sad yeah, the no, fact I agree. that I've said uh, 
that I've gone on vacations with my family. We just did one this year. I've gone on vacation with my wife's family. We're all staying in the same house at a Ooh, beach. Wow, yeah. So with my in-laws, I'm there for a whole week in a beach house. I, I get that. And I don't have huge issues with in-laws the way some people are like, oh, in-laws. And I'm like, aren't they just people? <laughs> and I've mentioned this to some people that like at work or outside of work. And they, and I said, oh, my God, I can't do that. I can't I can't even conceive of staying overnight at my, at my with my parents or on... I. I I would hate that. I would hate everything about that. It would never work. And it's, it just makes me sad. I have a shared yeah. experience that, um, and actually they finally sold the beach house this year. My mom and her husband, my father passed away about 20 years ago, um, had a house in North Carolina in Corolla that was a rental. I mean, as far as they rented it most yeah. of the year. We were just in Duck. That's where the yeah, thing was. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. yeah, we were just up the way. And that every two years, now, except they didn't, it was weird. Cause of, it wasn't really because of space. I don't know why. They did his family one year and our family the other. But the being able to share a space is beautiful. And some people get obsessed over going, oh, well, we got to plan type five million things. And I've always been the, nah. well, let's just rest in our let's space. Let's just and chillax and be do. family for a little there, bit. There was one year, the boys at that point, so my brother, my cousin, and I, you know, got ocean kayaks. And we just went out and got past the breakers and yeah. just kind of coasted that no I think those are important pieces of building community that yeah. that sense of your family always had more of a sense of community than a lot of families I knew I think that's part mm. of the reason for me it was always special going over there yeah um my dad was a workaholic nothing against him the idea that he would build train sets all over the basement with me was foreign as yeah. an idea so that the, that you guys were very much a really cool piece of my life and a way to go, okay, here's the way it ought to be more. Not that we were doing it wrong, but it was different. I've all, yeah. and Obviously, it's just gone from there on perspective. I just love, I feel like the more I do this, for instance, yeah. the more I learn about myself. Um, not even when it's, even sure. more so on a day yeah. when I'm talking to somebody that was there. That's right, yeah. But even on the days when I'm talking to somebody I've never met before, they'll be looking at these same pieces from a totally different angle and sometimes it makes something click in my head i found that i found that the the concept of loving your family and really like being involved in your family is is a very foreign concept to like americans i've noticed like yeah. most of most of the uh people that i know that are like uh foreigners or like their their families are from somewhere else traditionally yeah they have a really strong connection to their family like my family's like that where it's it's a really strong connection and the american sides of my family are a lot more scattered yeah mm. and it's it's interesting oh, I see, I see. seeing that you know like the differences i guess second or third generation from ghana so that a lot of the older members of guyana Ross, yeah guyana yeah Ghana's, different no, um, so my grandfather my yeah very different from Ga <laughs> oh, from okay guyana. yeah he gets I'm confused sometimes <laughs> <laughs> so we were gonna make a show called guyana Ga yeah, yeah, guyana right. ghana yeah <laughs> the three so, G's. This this becomes another prop opportunity. Okay, absolutely. So, this is a book that my mother wrote about our family. Oh, really? So no family way. history in here in this whole book: peanut butter on the wall, marshmallows in a microwave. Margaret Lee Hannah. <laughs> my mom wrote this uh, a couple years ago. I want to make sure that this other thing, the other props, not in here. Oh, that's the other one. Okay. So, this is. Uh, did she signed it. She might not have signed this one, but anyway, this is yours. Oh my God! Thank you. So and she has it will bring, boxes oh my books. God. So you can read all about in the pictures and everything. Right. All oh about my uh, God. us growing up six six Hannahs in Gehanna. It's the <laughs> subtitle of that book. Six I, Hannahs in Gehanna. I like that. Six Hannahs in Gehanna. Yeah. Oh my God. And your mom and your dad are still doing great. Oh yeah. They're gonna they're working on uh what's it, fifty six years? Fifty eight years of marriage? Jeez. I'm at twenty one. Fifty eight. Fifty eight, yeah. Fifty eight. I'm at twenty one on this marriage. Well, so I've actually put some good. time into it, yeah. a little bit. Here it's a lot. There. It's a lot of work. It, it's yeah. surprising amount of work. It is a lot of work, and I have found in general, it's whether or not you. People go, so how do you? Well, wow, how do you do that? And I, well, when it gets hard, you don't give up. Yeah. Right. Right. And sometimes it means you don't talk to each other for a couple of years. I mean, you do. Yeah. But you know what you. <laughs> well, but that's a, that's a feature of relationships and family, or outside of family, that works is the resilience part of it you've yes. got to be able to accept that 
shit happens. Yeah. And he was like, okay, it's my fault, or okay, you well, gotta let's be talk able about to accept to that it. people suck sometimes. That's right. And sometimes you're gonna suck. Sometimes right. things are gonna suck. You know. That's right. Yeah. You, you are not on suckless. Yes. And, and if you want to start, <laughs> if you want to start blaming people, that's a great way to end a relationship. Yes. Uh, it's best to start in a mirror if you're planning yes. on blaming things. That's right. Because guarantee that that, that 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 blame right. game can be played both ways. And how can you how can you uh, accept that, but then also point out somebody else's faults without right. pointing the finger without blaming mm, them right uh, but to be constructive well you'd yeah. be constructive that's right and in a loving relationship where you fight the most with the people you love it seems like oh absolutely but you it's have to understand that this meaningful. stuff happens that's right because it is meaningful uh, but then how do you not destroy it when you're, mm. when you're doing that it's it's a it's a it's a tough road to hoe it, I, I really agree that you know what it's very much a how do you tend the fire yeah and fires can burn yeah yeah you know that the reality I've always you know, had that sort of association with the fact of, you know, it's, you have to add fuel to it, you have to take care of it, you have to, it's oh, almost, yeah. and I've been in some pretty complicated relationships, and I've always said, you have to treat the relationship like it's another person in the, in the relationship, that, okay, I care about me, I care about you, but I care about this. Yeah. Mm. This matters to this me. This matters, yes. You That's know, right. that I'm, I'm a part of something. Not just I'm a sole part. I'm not a participant. I'm a well. One of the yeah. one of the hard parts about love and caring about someone is the fact that you have to be of the mindset that no, no to to a certain extent, no matter what this person does, I'm always going to love them, and they're mm. always going to be in my life. It's the advice I give young people getting married. I I had a buddy, and I said, it's not whether or not you love each other. It's whether or not you love each other enough to get through the days you don't like each other. That's right. Because there's going to be, you're not yeah. always, if you're thinking every day is going to be roses, it's going to go wrong and you're not well, going to make and that's, it. And that's another very important aspect to it as well, how you manage your expectations. If you have mm, yes. this expectation of this person that's going to fulfill all of your needs and wants or fulfill these very specific needs and wants, right. then if they don't live up to expectations, whose fault is it? Is it's it their fault or your fault? Right. Fantasizing right. is catastrophizing with extra steps. You're the one who built up this expectation. <laughs> That's right. They didn't meet it. That's and is it their fault that they didn't meet your expectations, especially if you didn't tell them that? Right. right. And that literally That's the even, basis for our yeah. entire Where's the Line show is that people walk around pissed so often about things that nobody even knew they were going to be pissed so that the reaction isn't even... Like, if people had known, they might have acted differently. That's right. right. Yeah. But you're angry at them for something you never <laughs> told them I think about. Every, every romantic comedy is probably based on that one thing. Yes. Right. And therefore, it makes yeah. it completely unrealistic and <laughs> realistic <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, at, it, it, if, if you're able to express the... It, I'm not perfect by any means. But no, I, we're not. This is... Uh, but you, t you try. It, that's the answer. I, I think it's, a, you know, understanding that that's... And I've caught myself doing that as a parent, or as as well as a, as a spouse, right? And, you know, like, well, wait a minute, how did that three-year-old know not to eat that sand? Did I tell them <laughs> not to eat that sand, or did I just think that they did? Did I, did I think that I told them? Well, yeah, I, I joke don't about know. the fact I have to tell that, them that. That's hu my job. humans are going to human, you know, and and that the the belief that they're not going to human will get you in trouble. Yeah. My, my mom and I talk about the fact that I can ask her anything in the in the world, as long as she has the right to answer. Yeah, and she can answer no comment. Well, so. right, and, then, and, and then I don't have any expectation as to what that answer is going yeah. to be. She has that control. She has that, yeah. What do you fear? Well, I fear a lot of things, sometimes unjustifiably, but sometimes justifiably. So, for example, in my uh, previous house, mm -hmm. it would flood all the time. The basement would flood because we were tied in a, what's called a combined sewer overflow. So uh, where the storm water went, all the mm -hmm. poop water went. Oh, so when we got dear. massive rainstorms, which we did in this old house, poop water is oh, yeah. water. inches of poop water, and then we'd go down, and then I'd be uh, faced with cleaning up. Right. And it always happened at two a.m. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then almost, or when I'm on vacation, right? right. So right yeah, now yeah, I'm kind of like on, I'm like on tender hooks if we're ever going to get a rainstorm in Chicago, because now I know too much, because this little black box can tell me a lot of things and feed a lot of my anxiety. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. Right. So anyway, so so I'm kind of afraid of that. But then you have to think, well, why are you afraid of that? Well, it just damages stuff, all right? So I've gotten a lot less attached to stuff because it got <laughs> right. damaged. I had to throw it out. Because <laughs> I didn't right. have control over it. Because I, I don't believe it. Yeah. I'm not wearing that sweater anymore because I know what it's been through. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm less attached to that sweater now. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, absolutely. So, uh, so that's 
I guess, useful to understand it. You have to realize you're, you're Embrace of some of the chaos. That's right. So uh, one time I was on a flight actually coming back into Columbus, and this was after my kids and my wife went to Mexico, and I had to do, I had to come here uh, for family. And it was planned that way, and we hit some turbulence coming in, like, you know, major winds or whatever, and I just got really, really scared of flying at that point because mm. now I had people relying on me. And they right. didn't see me anymore. Absolutely. And so I was like, oh, my God. And so then it became afraid of flying. So I worked through that, too. So it's, it's that fear of loss that everybody has. It's a very specific fear of loss of getting better at Well, in the end, it's all fear go. management. Right. That in the end, I, I, I joke, and you'll, fear is the mind killer. Of course. Mm. Yes. The spice it must is. flow. <laughs> yeah, that's the next bad but We're not going to go that far. Uh, but, yes, fear is the mind killer. It, it is, it, it, it absolutely. Makes you, it makes you stop doing things. It makes you fear the it's, loss of a relationship. It makes you fear... Uh, I've gotten to the, to point, the point where, where you don't I've defined it. greed and generational wealth as based on the fact, and this is just hypothesis, that globally there isn't a human that doesn't fear it all being taken away. All the way up to the Queen of England. Sure, right. Got to run the, got to run the company right. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, that, she definitely has a fear of t- getting that, everything sure, taken yeah. away. That, Globally, the reason we are all constantly in fear is That's all right. of us know at any moment there's the possibility the bottom can drop. Shoot, out. one of the thing, one of the things they talked about. I was watching some Windsor thing and some Windsor thing. Yeah, some Windsor thing. It was all War about the, the Windsors. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> one of the things they were talking about was how uh, one of the queens was very, very worried that the same thing that happened to her cousins was going to happen right. to her. So they inherited a lot of that fear that. Like really, a lot taught. of that, yeah. It. That's Lizzie one, wouldn't it? Could have been. I think it might have been. But so uh, another great vignette, kind of a story that I think about whenever I think about fear, is uh, I love reading World War II history books right. or books about World War II, and when the Americans firebombed most of Japan, right. in a very vicious fashion, because you know Japanese homes were made of wood and paper for the for yes. the largest part, and so they were very devastating. Uh, and people had to run for their lives, lost everything. Uh, and so there's a story about a, a Japanese family who ran from, I think, the latest Tokyo firebombing in March of 1945, mm-hmm. sheltered okay. in a ditch, were, was able to survive the, the firestorm. And after that, the father stood up, looked around, and said, well, I guess I don't have to worry about my home burning down anymore. But it's true. Well, but it's true. <laughs> I mean... I, I, it's you meaningful. don't have to worry about that. It's yeah, gone. It's gone. So you're not attached that, to that anymore. You're not guess. attached to that anymore. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I've had a white so, flyer too like that. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> but it, it's very instructive. Like, oh, he let go. He was forced right. to let go. Right. But in that moment, after he let that go. loss, when he realized the things that he cared about the most oh, absolutely. were in a ditch but alive next to him, it's like, okay. Well, that very much that. for me, that, no, it was, it's been a shit show. I did 50 years of shit show. Now, don't get me wrong. At some points, people didn't think that's what was going on. Yeah, I, I call it the the path of the sledgehammer, that you eventually have to realize you're not in control, and that you've yeah. hit yourself in the head enough times mm-hmm. that you better let go of stuff. Um, I don't worry about things. Like it's why I talk endlessly about not. You're right. I'm broken. I have no interest in any money. I don't want any money. I don't have any interest in money. Now, does the nonprofit need money? Yeah, I gotta reach out to. I want to reach out to Kenevi and see if he'll help me set up the five hundred one three C. That that's the reality of what yeah. has to happen. But what I've, the one thing is I that I've I've come to know is that I don't know anything. That the more I walk into each day with the idea of I've never been here before, the more I go, oh, oh, I, I never find, saw that. I find that more often than not, I'm I'm more afraid of being afraid than I am of the actual thing. Mm. Like I'm, I'm afraid that I'm scared. If that makes any sense. What you're saying is the only thing to fear <laughs> is fear. Is fear is itself. Fear itself. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Right. Na- hit the, the nail on the head. Makes you just want to get in the arena. <laughs> History uh-huh. teachers like heck yeah. <laughs> they paid there attention. What do you feel like you know? Uh, you know you're. Well, I don't feel like I don't know anything because now I'm, I guess, one of the elder statesmen in my office in the in the in my job capacity so Isn't people are for some answers in fact we're for example getting a new uh director 
in our group. So this is the person mm -hmm. who testifies before Congress, signs the reports. Right, right, right. They're supposed to know this kind of stuff. Well, right. behind every director is a... A bunch of people that actually people know actually, things. Yeah, yeah. And tell them this is what's Non-politically appointed people. Yeah, we're all non-politically <laughs> uh, appointed. Non is the director yeah. politically appointed or not? No. Oh, uh, well, that's a good the thing. The Comptroller then. General of the United States is the head of the agency. He's nominated by the president. And, I'm sorry, no. Uh, he There's a list that's drawn up. Are they on six year? Do they? No, they the over? Comptroller General's fifteen year term. Right. I, I knew that they. I knew that a number of those were set up longer terms right. over top, so that there was no skin and in I the think, game relative to politics. I I think, and it, it hasn't happened for a while, so I'm a little bit rusty on the secession planning. But the, like, both parties draw up a list of people that they would accept, and they submit mm. it to the president, and then he sort of plays arbitrary. Even for a congressional office, I think he sort of says, "Yeah, that guy." Uh, but but we're a congressional agency. So where was I going with that? Anyway. Uh, Elder so statesman. I, yeah, I gotta, I gotta learn this, this new person, the vicissitudes and the internal workings of the postal service. Uh, as far as we know it, and as far as we want to talk about, you know, we want to look right. at this, we want to pursue this angle or that angle, or bring talk him up about to these speed. Kind of things. I gotta bring this person up to speed who doesn't know anything about the postal service other than what anybody else does, uh, that they deliver the mail. Well, so, right. So, I feel like I'm knowing a lot. I know a lot more than what I thought I did. Is it interesting as that perspective changes as we've gotten older? Well, it does. Because do you really feel like you well, every, know? Like, I mean, I, there's lots of information. That's right. And don't get me wrong, I know a lot more than I did when I was 20. But relative to the overall knowledge available, yeah, I've moved the... Uh, oh, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> and every successful person thinks they're a fraud at some point. Imposter syndrome, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I, I mean, sometimes I think I am. And then, then I'll encounter somebody who knows way more about the Postal Service. And they'll smoke me. Right. Yeah, like, oh, wow, I didn't know about that part. And let me go down to that little rabbit hole. And down that rabbit somewhere. hole. Right. And that's fine. I, that's, that's necessary for learning. Well, the, uh, we talk a lot about the idea of embracing the, the getting it wrong. Because if you get it wrong, you learn something. <laughs> I have to try and remember that there's always some, someone smarter. Because I have, I have these weird things called hormones that make me think I know everything. <laughs> and... <laughs> Um, They're not weird. It's very common. Yeah, it's, very, it's a common. It's, it's a common, <laughs> common, uh, common problem. That's right. <laughs> um, no, I have to constantly remind myself. Oh, there's probably a person that knows more than you right now sure. in this room. You gotta like, like sometimes, sometimes I'll, 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 I'll yeah, I, I'm there's losing track of my stronger, thoughts. But yeah, smarter, faster. Yeah, there's always. There's always. Everybody knows something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. everybody. And that's but that makes it more interesting and more Yeah, exciting. no, it makes it endlessly interesting. What do you wish you knew? Uh, I'm watching the clock, too. You just don't yeah, realize I it. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it's horrible. Uh, I'd like to stay longer, but I, I made the, this other meeting that I got to no, go No, you're fine. Go do. But anyway. <clears throat> um, Embrace the pleasure of it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask the question again. So I can what do you wish you more. knew? What do I wish I knew? I mean, there's unrealistic stuff. Um... What, okay, off the top of your head, what's the unrealistic? Well, one? I, 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 about, I want the crazy stuff. I keep, too. I keep thinking about this. You know, like the uh, common question is, what kind of superpower would you most like to have? Oh, right. absolutely. You Where know, would you fly go? Fly or whatever, or be invisible. The special power that I wish I had uh, uh, is to understand every language in my head, Ooh. every language, yeah. dialect, everything else, and be able to speak that language to somebody else, not only just perfectly, but in the idiom. Using humor that oh, they would right, understand and that they would right. brook, because that you could be you, you could would be have socially a like that would be yeah. mind boggling. I spent a lot yeah. of time. I've got a, a Quebecois kind of buddy, and actually who now lives on the west coast of Canada, so he's living amongst the, the English speaking folk. And we were talking about the, what an amazing difference it makes in perspective. And he was on vacation, and he had a sign, and it in English it said, "You know what? Do not disturb." You know, something very yeah. polite, and in French it says, we're engaged in intimate moments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a mistranslation. <laughs> the best part, the, 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 the French are like, no, you don't understand, we're in here getting it on. And in English it says, we're inside being respectful of each other. <laughs> that's <or> right. <laughs> but to be able to tell a joke to, like, uh, a Chinese person from oh, exactly. Guangzhou versus being, Beijing, you know, different dialects. Being able to adapt to, like, the social cues of each. That's right. Yeah. Exactly well, right. I think that would be a superpower that would be unparalleled. That, like, that's I a totally superpower, agree. yeah. That, 
There are uh, concepts yeah. in Thai. So it's a weird thing, suddenly dropped into the middle of a language you don't speak. There comes a point you're dreaming in the language. But when you wake up, even though you knew the dream was perfect and everything, including what you said was right, you don't have a clue. Yeah. yeah. So you're already dreaming in yep. it. But, but when you wake up, you can't... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I want that... I'm down. That's yeah. a superpower. Well, that would, and you could communicate with anybody. You could establish that rapport. Do you want to go I mean, universal kind of... or just planet? Are you hoping for outside... Ooh. So, Well, the limits of my consciousness, of course, are the planet. Uh, so that oh, would be true. that would be kind of an amazing. I mean, how many dialects are there in the, in you, the world? I mean, you wish for universal <laughs> translator skills. You end up with the superpower, and you're like, wait a minute. There's a bunch of these languages I don't recognize. <laughs> you start <laughs> you start you start talking you start talking to dogs and stuff That's like right. that. You start I think talking that was to in cats. The, was that Hitchhiker of the Galaxy? Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Your, yeah, the, That's right. The the translator thing. The translator. I don't know. I mean, uh, certainly just with humans, of course. But that would just be an amazing way to connect with mm-hmm. people to get out of out to out of and into mm-hmm. situations or into the, and out of, depending on I, what you look at. It's and I'm t- it would change your perspective on the world. Yeah. Because the different idioms in different cultures all of a sudden open up perspectives. You're like, oh, I get it. They lived this way. Which makes this idiom for this thing more... It's a rabbit yeah. hole. Right. And you could change their perspective, too. So on the way back from from Duck, we drove drove there. So it was like 15 hours mm, of it's driving. A long drive. And to avoid storms and to avoid Washington, D.C.'s traffic nightmare, we took some back roads. You know, single lane roads and some other things, wherever Apple Maps said to go. Right. And there were some interesting signs and interesting people staring at us in interesting ways as we're driving through their, their little burg. And I thought, well, that would just be great to actually talk to these people. That even right. And I speak the same language, right? right I think. But the idioms you know, would are totally different. Right. right. And how to establish that rapport? How to establish that connection? Uh, yeah, it's. That's I, funny. Uh, That's what I spent the last fifteen years working on. That when I yeah. traveled all over, in a truck, ending up in different places, and that was really a lot of. Don't get me wrong. Actually, I look back, and so much of it was on the journey of understanding perspectives, even yeah. looking at a food place where you're seeing people every day. But that going into a place, using local labor, we bring in four or five yeah. guys, depending on the size of the job, I'd have to get them up to speed in moments because we had about 12 hours then to pack everything out and get it out. Mm-hmm. And so I spent a lot of time finding what idioms went across. like because you, you're tr- So I'd start off with a speech about how you know, we can all bitch and moan, or, you know, when I know a two, few jokes, maybe you know a few jokes, yeah. we'll, we'll get through it. And then we got to stacking things on pallets. Ends up Princess in the P crosses almost crosses all over. cultures. <laughs> that when trying to explain how you stack things and make them not yeah. level, make them not unlevel, you know, you, you think about it, it was the Princess in the P. Was, so I was yeah. constantly searching for those modes yeah. of c- conversation that would allow me to that move is. us forward. I guess, and that's guess a skill. You've bra- you've braved the entire ten Q. There's one more. No, there's, there's one, one more. more. There's one more. One more. There's one more question. The last question is. Why are you here? Yeah. <laughs> I, know, I wanted to be on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. That's a great answer. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to I wanted to share this kind of stuff that my the, mom has pawned off on oh me. Oh my from god! I am amazed. <laughs> the, so. No, I've got one of them that I got out of my mom's basement a couple months ago. Yeah. I was going through and I was like, yeah, I guess I should take the religion book home. Because <laughs> I've got it. I've narrowed down to one shelf full of books that are meaningful to me. Yeah. So Philip K. Dick. Um, the C.S. Lewis is currently out here with the Poe. But um, a bunch of uh, religious study stuff. Because I I, that's been a rabbit hole I've gone down since I was a kid. Yeah. As a teenager, I was interested in reading stuff on different faiths and then ended up at a Catholic school. It's been an interesting... Oh, yeah. When you look back, it all makes sense. It did not make any the, sense no. at the time. Nah, no. it didn't. That's it never true. does. If you can look back and it all makes sense, it all falls into place. Yeah. So don't you know the reality of the future is? Not that it doesn't fall into place, not that it doesn't all work out, but that you're simply looking at it from the wrong perspective. That once you get to there, don't worry, it all falls into place. I don't know if it's a, the wrong perspective, is it? I mean, you're not really thinking of it at the time. Well, right. That, exactly. You're making, no, you're making mean choices wrong, that go this wrong way. wrong that way. I mean, that the perspective that allows you to see it all falling into yeah. place, you're currently standing at the... 
not wrong. Like you have control. You're standing you're in the standing present. Here, looking yeah. at this way, there's no way. You're in the middle see. of the storm, not knowing right. how the storm ends. Right. No, and you don't. Yeah. You don't. You I, can make some good reason projection, projections. Oh, absolutely. Though, based I, on what you know. I, it's it's all Legos in my head. It's yeah. all Lego. I'm not supposed to say the S, but okay. screw Lego and then come after yeah. me. Whatever. That, <laughs> um, I let all the ideas just float, and then some days you turn around, there's like a castle. Okay. That, yeah. Um, it drives Ross crazy sometimes because I'll have to rest in it. And then we'll. And then I'll rest in it. And then we'll go. And then yeah. I'll rest in it. And then we'll. There you yeah, go. That's how that goes. It's <laughs> <Take> a good metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, 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 so one moment was, and then somehow we find a pastor that's selling the 20 channel board for yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, a quarter oh, oh, oh. of the price. Yeah. And you go. And that moves us to next. Okay, we're, we know where we've wanted to go. This cements it. We put it in the middle of the room. The last one was just a couple weeks ago, and oddly it was an update on TVs in the house. I pulled off, I bought a 55, a 37, and a 32. Total out the door, 80 bucks. Wow. The Samsung on the wall was 50. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a TV go bad, and I needed to replace a 55. But what it did that was meaningful had nothing to do with the TVs. Right. The, the, the biggest not 55 went into Ross's room. But it meant that the 22 that he'd been using as a TV moved in here as a monitor. Yeah. And it totally gave us next step. And it oddly, sometimes these leaps are not like you look and go, oh, that was meaningful. Yeah. No, it just gave him more space to think. And well, suddenly you progress. You know, as you're talking, I'm thinking about the different points where I've been, you know, depressed, dejected or whatever. And now that I'm older as opposed to when I was younger in the past when I was younger. Right. <laughs> as opposed to like, now. <laughs> well, I've been through this. I've been through the mill. Right. This, the sun comes out after the storm that flooded your basement. The sun always came out. It afterward. always came out. Right. Everything and it's amazing I thought I'd happened. never survive. Same situation, different I day. I'm, I, I still have to clean up the shitty basement. <laughs> but the sun's out, and I got friends to help, and now I got a different uh, attitude toward it. Mm. Well, did, have, have you listened to the turds? show did you ever listen to the i think episode? i did yes i think i did the, yes. the one about someday life gives you turds and what you do is polish them because you don't know which one's going to end right. up being the one that causes makes That's the right. difference god i am so grateful jeff and i hope jeff jeff greg, everybody god i don't know why i'm doing accident. that <laughs> that greg i am so grateful because sometimes this my high school years are weird for me to access i felt like i never fit in oh yeah i agree and it was, I think it was an interesting growing up. <laughs> oh yeah, and you talk to the people who probably fit in the bestest, and they probably had the same. Like they didn't fit in. Yeah. They were desperate, so that or they did, and now they're over. Now they never now fit in anywhere, yeah. or something like that. I don't know, or maybe they've always fit in. I don't I, really I know. I tell kids that are off the the charts, not fitting in, and go. You know, I'll tell you a secret about when I got older. You were the interesting people I wanted to talk to. Those idiots were still trying to fit in. You're trying. trust me on every. This. You're gonna be the cool kid. When you get past that's everybody right. desperate to be I the tell cool you what, you I felt like I felt like a bumbling idiot in high school. Every person I've talked to was like, "Oh, you seem pretty nice. You seem like you were doing pretty well, and like you, yeah. you socially understood things." And I was like, "No, man, I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what was going and everybody on." Everybody else was too, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I, but, I think so. But, but we're always sure somebody got it. Yeah. Did I, 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 so Ross is nineteen, and one of the the brilliant breakthroughs was just so you know. They lied to you. None of us had a fucking clue. Yeah. yeah. Forgive oh, your man. parents. Forgive everybody. None of them understood what? what was going on. We were on, all really. just, yeah, sorry. Didn't no. mean to convince <laughs> you. I know we told you because I said so. That's right. We didn't have a clue. <laughs> you read that book, and my mom was like, well, you know, this happened. I was like, well, I don't know how to do with that. <laughs> I was like, I, I got to do this. And she had six kids. And she was just like, well, I guess, I'll I guess we're going to figure this out. And it was stressful. It was painful. It was right. stressful. But a lot of things happened with six kids, different things. Was that an interesting person? So. I'm assuming you've read it. Oh yeah, yeah. I was it. it an it, was it an eye-opening <laughs> perspective? There were some things that I didn't remember at all. That that my mom said, "Oh yeah, that happened." Like really? I didn't know that, or I didn't remember that at all. And some some I, don't know, I won't say secrets, but she said, you know, for there was one winter. It was just like the worst winter I, uh, that she had. And like my father was on business trips for a long time, and so on and so forth. She had six kids by herself, and she said, like took up smoking. Mm -hmm. Like you smoked. My mom smoked, <laughs> like, oh, my God. It's like, yeah, it was very, very stressful for, like, a little bit. She like, And then she got rid of it after a while. Well, but it was but very stressful. It was like, oh, my God. So I, things I, things I can't wait. Because I can't wait to read it because I think 
more parents should tell more of these stories because it makes us feel like it makes us I, feel a lot better as well, kids when as we hear parent, that the messed up stories. Knowing that they were clueless yeah. too. <laughs> and they they ran marriage encounter weekends where you go. It was a retreat for married people to go off and you know uh, yeah I re- that. rethink your your marriage your relationships. You know, you go with, you know, like all the men talk to you, all the women talk together, and then you come back and you talk about what you just talked about. You have presentations from priests and presentations right. from people who were married. They also ran uh, engagement counter weekends. So if you get engaged, you have to go through what's you called pre right. But then this was also optional, but you go away for a weekend with your, uh, you know, spouse to be your fiance, and you write about, well, what, what are your goals for like kids? How do you, how do you approach come Money. together and ask the real questions as opposed that's to that's right and do it now and so those weekends were always successful because you either came out of those like yeah i want to marry you because it's great or right. we got to work on some stuff or oh, oh gee, snap we're not getting married we're not getting married <laughs> and that's a success <laughs> that is that's a success because you, well that you avoided you avoided well, so much that's right yeah in relationships we are awful about the idea especially and it, it may be maybe it's a puritan thing that three dates in everybody now you can't get now we're a couple well, well, probably not. Well, maybe not. Get it wrong as many times as you need to. Better than to That's right. right. You, let's figure this out. Oh, what yeah. a blessing! So I, figuring it out means I gotta go. I gotta go no, figure out some more stuff. Thank you so much, Greg. Thanks for I having can't, me. I'm just delighted. I I'm so delighted. I'm gonna hit the end thing here so I can say goodbye. But oh my god, I. I oh, cool. You know what? And we can do this by phone. We can do yeah, this. Yeah, sure. 